Lagoa Santa, one of the America's most mysterious archaeological sites, is located deep in the heart of Brazil. This ancient burial site, located within limestone caves, has captivated scientists for centuries. The fossils discovered here tell the story of a people whose physical characteristics, burial practices, and DNA reveal surprising similarities to other prehistoric populations throughout the Americas. These findings call into question long-held assumptions about the New World's population and point to a far more complex tapestry of human migration. The story begins in the 19th century, when Danish naturalist Peter Wilhelm Lund discovered human remains alongside the bones of extinct megafauna, including saber-toothed cats and giant sloths. Lund was the first to recognize that these fossils were from a prehistoric population that lived in South America thousands of years earlier than previously thought. One of his most well-known discoveries was the Luzia fossil, a 12,000-year-old skull that sparked heated scientific debate. The Lagoa Santa fossils stood out because of their distinct physical characteristics. The skulls had narrow faces and pronounced features, resembling modern-day indigenous Australians, Melanesians and Africans, rather than the Native Americans traditionally associated with the region. This discovery challenged the widely held belief that all Native Americans descended from a single wave of migrants who crossed the Bering Land Bridge from Siberia around 15,000 years ago. However, advances in DNA technology have revealed new details about the Lagoa Santa fossils. Recent genetic studies of Lucia and other remains have yielded unexpected results, while physical characteristics suggested a connection to populations outside the Americas. DNA revealed a different story. What's fascinating is that the Lagoa Santa DNA contains traces of an ancestral lineage that is largely absent from most modern Native American groups. Geneticists refer to this lineage as Population Y and believe it represents a second earlier migration wave into the Americas. Population Y DNA has also been found in groups as diverse as the ancient Botocudo people of Brazil and the Andean populations of South America. The presence of Population Y raises some interesting questions. Were there multiple migrations to the Americas from various parts of Asia or even Oceania? Could some of these early groups have taken a coastal migration route along the Pacific Rim to reach South America before the widespread Clovis expansion 13,000 years ago? The Lagoa Santa site is remarkable not only for its fossils, but also for providing insight into these ancient people's cultural practices. The burials at Lagoa Santa were unusually elaborate for the time. Individuals were frequently buried in flex positions, knees drawn to the chest, surrounded by tools, ornaments and food remains. One particularly intriguing discovery was the use of red ochre in burials, which has been observed in other ancient cultures around the world, ranging from Africa's Paleolithic hunters to North America's Paleo-Indians. Red ochre, which is frequently associated with ritual or symbolic purposes, suggests that the Lagoa Santa people took a spiritual or ceremonial approach to death. The arrangement of grave goods provides further evidence of ritual practices. Stone tools and animal bones discovered near the bodies suggest that these items had symbolic value, possibly to help the deceased in the afterlife. These burial customs reflect a society with a strong sense of community and spiritual beliefs, similar to their counterparts in other parts of the Americas. Nevertheless, the Lagoa Santa fossils are not found in isolation. Similar remains have been discovered at other important archaeological sites throughout the Americas, providing a complex picture of early human migration and interaction. The Botacudo people of Brazil, a later indigenous group in Brazil, show evidence of Population Y ancestry. Genetic analysis has revealed that the Lagoa Santa people are closely related to other ancient populations in the Americas, particularly the Clovis culture in North America and early groups in Chile and Peru. Surprisingly, their skulls differ from those of later Native Americans, indicating the presence of an ancient genetic lineage in the region. Ancient North Eurasians, a Paleolithic Siberian population, carry haplogroup QM242, which is thought to have originated around the Altai Mountains, or south-central Siberia, about 17,000 to 31,700 years ago. According to one theory, after crossing into North America from Siberia, a group of the first Americans with the lineage D4H3AE moved south along the Pacific coast in boats, eventually arriving in Central and South America after thousands of years, 
What's more, three Lagoa Santa individuals share the same Y chromosome haplogroup, known as Q1B1A101M848A, also found in the Nevada Spirit Cave genome. In another study, Harvard researchers sequenced the genomes of 52 indigenous groups and discovered they shared DNA with ancient North American skeletons. Two of the Lagoa Santa skeletons have the same mitochondrial DNA haplogroup, D4H3A, as the 13,000-year-old Anzic remains discovered in Montana. The boy's mitochondrial DNA is from haplogroup D4H3AE, a founder haplogroup that may represent people who migrated to the Americas via the coast. Clovis culture of North America, 13,000 years ago, widely regarded as the first widespread culture in the Americas, shared genetic ancestry with the Lagoa Santa population. This connection emphasizes the mobility and adaptability of these early groups, who may have traveled long distances in search of resources. Spirit Cave in Nevada, 10,600 years ago, is also an interesting connection. In terms of DNA, the skeletal remains from Spirit Cave resemble those found at Lagoa Santa. While the physical characteristics differ, genetic evidence indicates that both populations descended from the same migratory wave. As mentioned, one of the most intriguing aspects of the Lagoa Santa story is the enigmatic population Y lineage. This genetic signature is thought to represent an ancient migration wave distinct from the main Beringian migration that produced most Native American populations. While population Y has largely disappeared from the Americas, its DNA can still be found in ancient fossils and some modern indigenous groups. For example, Monteverde, Chile, 14,500 years ago, is one of the Americas' oldest archaeological sites, dating back thousands of years before Lagoa Santa. Tools and dietary remains discovered here indicate that early humans followed a coastal migration route, possibly from Asia, hugging the Pacific coastline until they reached South America. The genetic similarities between Monte Verde populations and Lagoa Santa indicate that they may have had common ancestors. Some researchers suspect that population Y originated in Southeast Asia or Oceania, this theory is supported by genetic similarities between ancient South Americans and certain Pacific Island populations, implying a trans-Pacific migration. However, the exact route and timing of this migration are unknown. Did these early explorers sail across the open ocean or hop between islands along the northern Pacific Rim? Indeed, the Lagoa Santa fossils are rewriting our understanding of the Americas' population history. Far from being a simple story of migration across the Bering Land Bridge, the evidence suggests a more complex narrative involving multiple waves of migration, interbreeding, and cultural interchange. The Lagoa Santa people's closest Amerindian relatives are the Yaghan of Tierra del Fuego and the extinct Pericue tribe of Baja California. However, no evidence of population Y has been discovered in the Yagan or Pericue, at least not yet. For decades, scientists thought the Clovis culture represented the first humans in the Americas. Now, sites such as Lagoa Santa and Monte Verde have shattered this paradigm, demonstrating that humans arrived in the Americas much earlier than previously believed. Furthermore, the genetic diversity of these early populations reflects the complexities of their origins. In fact, Proto-Australasians were the first humans to leave Africa and are the indigenous people of Australia and island Southeast Asia. Their descendants include Australian Aborigines, Negritos from Southeast Asia, Melanesians and Andaman Islanders. Population Y suggests that they also reached South America. Until more evidence emerges, the most likely scenario is that the first bands to settle America had an Australasian component in their DNA. According to some anthropologists, other evidence of a proto-Australasian presence in the Americas includes similarities between rock paintings from Lagoa Santa and Australia, similarities between Fuegian and Aboriginal Australian body painting, and African facial features in the colossal Olmec Stoneheads from Mexico. Proto-Australasian settlement of the Americas is an exciting, if controversial, possibility, but it is most likely not true. Although the Australasians made it to Australia, there is little evidence that their boats could cross the open Pacific. So, how could Aboriginal Australians have sailed to South America if they hadn't settled the Polynesian islands? Researchers examined the genomes of two ancient humans from northeast Brazil, both of whom lived approximately 1,000 years ago. 
by comparing these to other early genomes from the Americas and modern global genomic data, the study authors were able to shed light on how people first spread across South America. For example, the results revealed a clear link between the two Northeast Brazilian genomes and a person who lived in Southeast Brazil 9,000 years ago. These ancient settlers were also related to the skeletons of people who had lived long ago in Uruguay and Panama. Based on their findings, the researchers believe that the first people to arrive in South America migrated south along the Pacific coast. However, after reaching the continent's southern tip, at least one group separated from the rest of the population and traveled east to a place called Lagoa Santa on Brazil's Atlantic coast. Based on the age of the oldest human remains in this region, the study concluded that the split occurred at least 10,000 years ago. After reaching Lagoa Santa, various groups began migrating north and south, eventually forming an Atlantic migration route that connected Panama and Uruguay approximately 1,000 years ago. These findings confirm, for the first time, that South America was first populated by a southward wave along the Pacific coast, followed by a secondary wave along the Atlantic coast. Furthermore, new research has revealed that the first humans to settle in South America carried genetic material from several extinct Eurasian hominid species. These ancient migrants carried not only Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA, but also genes from Australia and Papua New Guinea, raising a number of intriguing questions about early human migration patterns. Interestingly, the researchers also discovered Denisovan and Neanderthal ancestry in the ancient inhabitants of Panama and Uruguay. To their surprise, they discovered that these genomes contained more Denisovan DNA than Neanderthal DNA. The Denisovans are thought to have lived in Asia during the Paleolithic period, but very few physical remains of this ancient human species have been discovered. It's incredible that Denisovan ancestry spread all the way to South America. The admixture must have occurred a long time ago, possibly 40,000 years. The fact that the Denisovan lineage survived and its genetic signal was found in an ancient individual from Uruguay, who is only 1,500 years old, suggests that there was a large admixture event between a human population and Denisovans. While the findings of this study shed new light on the movement and ancestry of these early settlers, they also indicate that the region's genetic history may be more complex than we previously thought. Though the Americas were the last continent inhabited by humans, little is known about how or when the first settlers arrived. There is a vast Pacific Ocean between Australasia and the Americas, and we still don't understand how these ancestral genomic signals appeared in Central and South America while leaving no trace in North America. Today, Lagoa Santa represents humanity's resilience and adaptability. These ancient Brazilians lived in relative harmony with their surroundings, hunting and gathering in the lush landscapes of Brazil. Their burial practices reveal a strong bond with their community and a belief system that has long since vanished. The Lagoa Santa fossils continue to spark debate and research. As scientists learn more about these mysterious individuals, they challenge us to reconsider our beliefs about who we are and where we came from. The story of Lagoa Santa is more than just about ancient Brazil. It's about the shared human journey, one fraught with mystery, migration and discovery. Future research into the Lagoa Santa fossils promises to reveal even more secrets. Advanced techniques in ancient DNA analysis, isotopic studies and archaeological excavation will shed light on these early Americans' lives and their relationships with other prehistoric populations. With each new discovery, we get closer to solving the complex puzzle of human history and the extraordinary role that Lagoa Santa plays in it. Thank you for watching the entire video. Please leave a comment. We would like to hear your thoughts. Also, please share, subscribe and like. And as always, take care.